Hi, I'm Bill Verge. Welcome to Plastow Area Cable TV, Channel 17. And tonight we're talking about Plastow athletes. We have the pleasure tonight to be here with uh, Dr. Jim Vitale, the Dean of Plastow Marathons. Uh, Jim Vitale's run about, uh, I think it's over 40 marathons in his, uh, in his career. So we're going to start off our show by talking to uh, Dr. Vitale and learn something about the marathons. The most recent marathon, uh, as you all know, the Boston Marathon just happened recently. And uh, Jim Vitale was a runner in the Boston Marathon. We're going to have a chance to talk to Dr. Vitale and find out about it. Welcome to Plasto Sports. Thank you for inviting me, Bill. You're the first person on the kickoff of our new show. Uh, well, I'm honored. So you just had the, uh, the Boston Marathon was when? A couple weeks ago or uh, just a week ago, right? Last Monday. And how long did you train to, to participate in that? Well, I've been training um, for probably seriously since January, mm -hmm. uh, doing a uh, series of build-up runs, starting at 10 miles long run up to about 15 miles of a long run. And um, I hadn't actually planned to run the Boston Marathon this year. It was a uh, seriously a last-minute decision uh, on Friday, the day before the race. Is that right? Yeah. Well, we have a few pictures of the uh, the events that happened, some of the events in the marathon. So I thought we might just start off by um, focusing in on a couple of the pictures that we had that that you had uh, taken for us. Now, the first picture that we have is um, this picture that uh, who took the picture for you? Uh, my wife Betty. Oh, so Betty got that. That's it's a picture of the uh, starting line. Uh, at, at the marathon. Where, where did it kick off, the Boston Marathon? That's the, the marathon begins in Hopkinton, Massachusetts. Now, how many people went to the start? How many people were at the starting line? Uh, there's over 16,000, I think 16,600 and so uh, official entries. Now, when you're standing at the starting line, you're pretty squished in there a little bit, I would guess, huh? Well, it's very organized into a series of uh, 1,000 group uh, corrals, they're oh. called. And your, your corral is uh, designated by your official qualifying time. Oh, okay. So they seed you according You're to seeded. what you might have run in the past. That's right. Now, the next picture we have uh, that we have up there is a uh, picture of you, actually. That's when you're at the starting line. That's you coming to the starting line. Yes. And you, you can see the picture of you. You're just that, that line right across on the, on the uh, road there. You're just about ready to step on that. Um, how long did it take you once the gun went off? Because there's so many people there, 16,000 people. I can imagine it might take quite a while for you to actually get to the start. Is that what happens? No. <laughs> no? It isn't. That's what usually happens. But I had a, a very unusual situation this year. Uh, I was a member of the uh, Human Chain volunteers that were part of the crew that uh, begins the race. Uh, my job was to stand in front of the corral number one where the uh, the best runners the next to best runners would be the the first 1,000 qualifying uh -huh. runners and my job was to stand in front of them and prevent them from starting uh, before the race began and actually my wife was part of human chain uh, number one and she was about 20 yards in front of me and in front in between the two of us were the group of maybe 80 elite athletes, oh. the, the runners that have a chance of winning. So you were right up, right up in the front? I was right there. Wow, that's, that's great. Now the next picture we have, um, that shows you running down, um, it's, it's an interesting perspective of you, it's a, it's a shot from behind with you running down the road. Now how far along were you, was this at the beginning or the, pretty uh, far along in the race or what? That picture's at mile 23, it's uh, not my best side. Now, where is the uh, Heartbreak Hill? Had you already gone past Heartbreak I Hill? Had, I had come down Heartbreak Hill. Heartbreak Hill is between mile 20 and mile 21. Okay, so you were, you were just about there at this point. Yes, this is the part of the race where you, um, you try to hang on. You have uh, not too much energy left. Your legs are pretty tired. And uh, you can see Kenmore Square from there. You can see the big Sitco sign in Kenmore Square. Now, did you have friends at mile 23 that were there? There was a crowd. Uh, all the volunteers from the human chain, uh, once their job was finished in Hopkinton, they uh, got on a bus, uh, headed into town, got, then jumped onto the green line and came out to mile 23, and they wow. just stood by the side of the road. And they cheered for anybody in uh, my running club or other people. Right. Well, it had to be pretty exciting. And the last picture that we have is a picture, um, 
I guess you have parties afterwards where a bunch of you yes, get together. Yes, we do. Now, is that true that you get Britney Spears? Is that who's there singing? Is that, uh, that's pretty special to have somebody like her come along and sing for I you. I think that is Britney Spears. Yes, yeah, that's great. That's great. That was a real special event. And then we have, uh, we have one other picture, I believe, and that's, that's a picture of you and your wife, Betty. Yes, we uh, made, had quite a day that day, uh, starting at about 7 o'clock in the morning and through the marathon beginning at noon and then uh, getting back to Methuen, where we had a, uh, a club party of the Merrimack Valley Striders, and Betty was part of a talent show that they put on. Oh, great. Now, is she a runner, too? Or? Uh, Betty is very supportive, but she doesn't run. Good. Good. Uh, and so that medal that we had seen when we opened up the, uh, the show, is that something that everybody gets that actually that finishes the marathon? Is that what that? Everybody receives a medal who's an official entrant. Um, you have to... Uh, cross the finish line, turn in your champion chip, which is the chip that uh, times the race, mm -hmm. and show your, your official uh, number to receive that medal. However, some people have ways to get the medals <laughs> <laughs> without having to go through those channels. Well, you have run the, uh, the marathon several times on, on a, what's considered an official basis as an official entry. Oh, quite entry in. Most years I've been an official. And how many marathons, I know we call you the Dean of uh, Marathons here in Plastow, but how many uh, marathons have you actually run in? That was my 44th or 45th marathon. Is that right? So there's been years when you've run two or three marathons? Most years I would run two. Really? Yes. And what's an average time, what would be a good time that you'd like to have? Like this past marathon, you hadn't really trained specifically to run this marathon? No, I really hadn't. I had uh, not run more than 15 miles for a year and a half before I entered this race. Well, let's go back to, you said that the, on the Friday before, the, the marathon was on Monday. Right. And on Friday, you were just sitting around watching TV and no. decided you might just no. run a marathon? Uh, or? This marathon thing, is it's a, it's a whole weekend. Um, my running club, the Merrimack Valley Stride, is also uh, is involved with the packet stuffing. So what that means is uh, for the 16,000 entrants, they all receive a little goodie bag. And to fill those goodie bags, it requires about 150 people to do. It takes mm. about three hours. So anyways, I was in Boston uh, in the Heinz Auditorium doing that. And friends of mine were speaking about the marathon. And I guess became jealous. <laughs> so, well, it isn't like you just woke up that morning anyway, because you've been running on a regular basis. I right? have been running. This is something that's really a lifestyle, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah, I run every day. How far, what would a normal day, did you run today or? Yes, today I ran only about 40 minutes. Each day I run usually in the morning, about 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh-huh. And right here, in, right here in town typically? Uh, usually out of the Haverhill uh, YMCA. Is there, do you meet up with other I meet, people? And I meet with uh, a good friend of mine, Dr. Ralph Fowler, and another uh, gentleman from Plasto, John Hannigan. Mm -hmm. and we've been doing this for 20 years. Is that right? Just and how far you, you might run five or ten miles? No, more like five. Five miles? Yeah. Well, that's great. Now, you, you run in a lot of other races on a regular basis, too, don't you? There's a few. Maybe one every couple of months or so. Uh-huh. And so your training is, is your training more geared towards marathons? or Yes. So? Well, it, it will be, but it, it usually is. Mm-hmm. Now, you've run, I've, I've uh, had a chance to look and see that you've run some half marathons, too. Yes. Has there been any particular half marathon that you thought was a, a fun race? Any neat places that you've run? Um, I enjoyed the Casco Bay half marathon. It's up in Portland, Maine. It's run along the uh, the, the uh, back bay there. Uh, that's a lot of. That's a nice course. Now you run a, a you ran a half marathon out in Michigan, didn't you? Out in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Or is it a 25k? And that's another James Vitale. <laughs> oh, it is. I, I saw that, and I was wondering what would you be doing out in Michigan? No. He, he runs about the same times as you. You should hook up with him. I maybe. should. <laughs> so most of your races have just been right around here in, in this? Pretty much New England. Mm -hmm. We uh, used to go to, um, well, we'll take a va almost like a vac mini vacation and go to Montreal or go down to uh, the Marine Corps, go to New York. And Did you run the Marine Corps yes. marathon? That's down in Washington, D.C.? Yes. Now, how many people would be in that one? Probably about 15,000, 16,000. And what about the New York City Marathon? That's usually in November? New York City Marathon uh, was my very, very first marathon in 1980. 1980? 1980. And I did uh, 3 hours and 42 or 3 minutes. And there was probably 40, 
I don't know, 25,000 runners now. 25,000? I think it's 40,000 now. 40,000 runners. Yeah. What was it like with 25,000 runners? I mean, that just had to be just an event to see them all, to see them all out on the well, road. Well, it begins on, on the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Mm -hmm. And when you're running over that bridge, you can actually feel the bridge uh, undulating. It's uh, it's quite a quite a thing, and the fire and they have the fire boats underneath spraying water. It's it's pretty nice. And what about when you're running through Boston? Do you get much support from the people along the way? Oh no, the qu crowds are just quiet. They don't say a <laughs> word. Right? Well, was there was there was there a million people there? That, that's what I I think I heard that someplace there was a million people. When when I came into Kenmore Square, where the Red Sox and the Yankees had just played, the, the Yankees so, win that game. No, I think the Red Sox won. Red Sox won. Kenmore Square must must have been filled with a hundred thousand people. It was ten deep. Uh, people are screaming. They're handing you beer, soda. Well, at cough that point, drops. how far do you have to go? Uh, Kenmore Square is a mile to go, one point two miles. So once you get there, you know you're you know you're going to make it. You well, know, most people do. Right? Yeah. Has was there any point in the race um, where you thought you might not be able to make it, or have you just done this enough where you know your body and know what you're going to do to make it you, through? You really never are completely sure, you know, you may have, I had a small ache in one of my calves uh, going up one of the hills. So I, I never really knew that you know, I'm definitely going to finish this, but I felt, I really did feel good this race. It was... Now how, how about your, your pace? Did your pace stay pretty consistent? Like when you ran the first mile, mm -hmm. um, would you run that at a similar pace to your 12th mile or your 13th, or were you getting slower each mile as you're going along? No, actually my first mile was uh, 9 minutes and 15 seconds, um, and that was because the, uh, the crowd's very, very heavy there at the start. And then so I you're kind of jockeying around with a bunch oh, of yeah. people? There's, you have to understand the, the race is held on a road the size of Route 121A in Main Street. Oh. So wow, that's a lot smaller than I would have expected. Oh, yeah, it's only a two-lane road. Oh. So you put... 16,000 people on a two-lane road. There's no room. Right. So it, it takes a few miles to uh, begin to even out. And I tried to run at a pace that was uh, comfortable, and I ended up staying at about 8.45 for the, pretty much the whole thing. So you kind of just settled into that. Yeah. And then it just keeps going mile after mile. Yeah. Now, did you stop along the way for, I know they have water stops. Do you utilize those, or what do I you I did. Do? Uh, our coach that day had told us that it may be a very warm day, and he suggested it. If you um, if you pass the water stop, to stop, take the water, walk a few steps, make sure you ingest all the water, and then get going. And I did that, and it, I never did that before. I always used to just take the water on the run, slug it down, and keep going. Right. But this time I tried something different, and uh, it seemed to pay off. I was very comfortable. Really. Now, how many water stops were there? Every mile. Oh, every mile there's oh, yeah. a water stop. And out of those, so there's 26 water stops. At least, plus then there's people giving you things. It, it, you, there's no reason to become dehydrated in Boston. How many times did you actually, did you stop every mile and take, take a couple of steps and get every, some water? Yeah. Oh, they really? You don't drink the whole cup. Right. You know. So you didn't need the water necessarily at first, but you're trying to build up the fluids to keep the fluids up. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, that's, that, do they give, they have Gatorade, or is there anything else that you use, anything like electrolytes to replace in your... Uh, every water stop would have uh, water first and then Gatorade after that. Mm -hmm. And if you're up near the leaders, uh, the leaders have uh, special tables, like the elite runners, they'll have a special table where they're, uh, they have a concoction. And, mm -hmm. and it's funny, you can see these little water bottles off to the side with a, uh, a flag of Morocco or a flag of Kenya. Oh, really? And these runners pick these right up off the tables. Now, what might they have in them that would be different than what you're getting? I don't know. You know. Who knows? <laughs> it would be something to replace the electrolytes or some kind of power surge. Or it could be, yeah, the, you know, there's, I'm sure there's substances they can't take, but uh, basically uh, Gatorade type things, sucrose, fructose, water. Mm -hmm. you know. They have oranges and stuff like that along the way People for you. People pass new oranges all the time. What about music? They have music, there are the bands and stuff. I, I've yeah. never been to the Boston Marathon, but I've heard that it's just an exciting the event. The first band you see is about a half mile into the race in Ashland. And it's a Dixieland band, and they play at a, a little pub off to the side, and, and there's a huge crowd around that. And then the next band you see is about six or seven miles in, in uh, Framingham, and they're playing on a rooftop of a car dealership. And I forget the type of band they are, but they're always there. And then the next band that I always see is coming into Newton, um, right near where Bill Rogers' store used to be. Oh, the running store, yeah. yeah. 
and then once you get into Boston, they're on the rooftops of BU and BC, and it's it's just a unbelievable day. Now, did you go down with anybody else that was running from the area? Yeah, I went down on the bus uh, with the group. Uh, there were three buses, three full buses of Striders. Is that right? And this, so they're from the whole Merrimack Valley? Pretty much the whole Merrimack Valley. Yeah. There wasn't anybody else from Plastow that, that you went with? I think there was no. a couple of other runners from Plastow. I met a Chuck Williams. Uh, he uh, actually made a presentation to our Lions Club um, a week before the a week or so before the race. And Chuck and, is from town here? Yes. Yeah. And uh, that kind of one is one of the reasons I wanted to run the race. I, it just started to say, well, maybe you can run the race. <laughs> so were you happy you did? I mean, there was no oh, yeah, nothing yeah. that you didn't hurt yourself in any way? Or? Not at all. So you, are you back? After you ran the race, <clears throat> how long did it take you to get back to being able to run again? Or are you just... I could walk downstairs three days later. <laughs> is that what it was? Is that right? It hurts. Yeah, it hurts. Uh, and I, I took a week off. I didn't run for a week. Some mm -hmm. people can run after a few days, but I seem to think my my legs feel better if I uh, don't run for a while. Well, at your advancing age, it's probably a good idea yeah, to, think so. to take some of that time off, right? <laughs> so when, what's the next What's the next uh, race coming up? Any any other plans? Any other? The, the next race uh, for me uh, may be the old home day race. The Plasto Old Home Day race. Uh, the and you're the race director of that, right? Uh, yes, I am. I've been the race director of the old home day race for maybe since its inception or something. Now, how many people come out to that? Uh, we usually get about 150 runners. That's pretty good. Yeah, that, it's that's a nice pretty good event. size for a yeah. you know, local event like that, right? Yeah, we really want to uh, keep it at a manageable level. It's um, completely volunteer uh, workers by the Lions, and uh, there's only so much we can do. We have a parade right after that to manage as well. So we try to keep it underneath. I, I really don't want over 200 runners uh, because it'll become hard to deal with. Now, is that a moneymaker? Is that a fundraiser for the lines? Or? It's a break-even situation. It is? In, on a good day. <laughs> on a good day. Now, is this some of, the, some of the gear you're wearing? Is this something you got from the Boston Marathon, the jacket? This, this, was, a, this was an official um, volunteer jacket that they give. Uh, every year they give a volunteer jacket out to the thousands of volunteers that help them. Mm -hmm. And I, I really received this because of being on the human chain, as well as the hat and the pin. What is the pin? Oh, that's a, an official marathon pin. The pin is the same as the uh, reverse side of the medal, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. And the shirt is a uh, Boston Marathon shirt. The shirt my wife bought. She bought it in, in Hopkinton uh, because I didn't. I wasn't an official entrant this year. I wouldn't get an official T-shirt. Right. But now they they're called the non-official entrants. Are they called bandits? Is that what it? They're called uh, affectionately bandits. And there's a lot. I mean, and I was one. Isn't Boston known for having? An awful lot of unofficial runners. Um, well, At Boston's point, unique. Were. Boston's unique in it, in in that uh, Boston and New York City and the Olympics, mm -hmm. to my knowledge, are the only races that uh, you have to have a. No, that I take that not New York. Boston and the Olympics are the only two marathons in the world, really, that you need a qualifying time to enter the race. Right. If you don't have that qualifying time, there's other ways to get into the race officially. You can be. Uh, a volunteer for like the Leukemia Society right. or things like that, and they, uh, w if you raise enough money uh, or then if you, you raise funds it, for them, they give you a number. Uh, but generally, Boston um, had a reputation of uh, holding out so that unofficial people couldn't run in the race, and there was always stories of people oh, there was some controversy about that in the past. People trying right? to get into the race unofficially, and really, my job, uh, not that I did it that well. Uh, was to keep unofficial people out. Sure. I just had a situation where um, once the race began, I was um, standing off to the side, and I took my jacket off and my pants I had and my hat. And I gave it, gave the bag to a person standing next to me, and we were watching the race. And I figured once the race had passed through and I started to see the bandits, I would then go, right. and go my way. But an opportunity presented itself. Um, a BAA official came by next to me, and uh, he told the police officer to open the gate. He had some uh, some um, VIPs from probably John Hancock or something. Sure, they were getting in. So he said, "These people can uh, enter the race, and you know, please let them through." So, so uh, you were there. So I said, "Good enough for me." <laughs> so you're in. That's great. So I, I really got to the finish. Uh, got to the start line after about a minute. 
I was right near the beginning. Well, that's really quick. Now, they have two times that they give people now. There's the, what they call the gun time. That's right. And what's called the, the net time. That's right. And, and what is the difference? People... Well, when you have that many people in the race, uh, they had to devise a system to time them because it really isn't fair if you're the 10,000th runner. It's going to take you four or five minutes or, s or more to pass that starting line, and you're losing time sure. all the time. Yeah, so terrible. what they have is an electronic uh, thing like the mobile speed pass that you wear on your shoe. And as you pass the starting line, uh, that clicks the time. So you're, you will receive, when you finish the race, a time that you actually pass the clock in Boston, and then you'll also receive that chip time oh. that tells you that's really how long it took you to get from the start to the finish. Oh, that's great. So that, that, so that does... So is one official time and one is... The official time is, is your chip time. Oh, so that's good. So that, yeah. that is not kind the, of an not equalizing the kind time. of a thing. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So is there any, any uh, training particularly that you should tell people if anybody's interested in running a marathon, somebody, Plasto wants to run a marathon, how would they start? Well, um, should you start with something different than trying to, I mean, that wasn't your goal initially when you decided to run, was it, to go out and run a marathon 20 years ago? I think so. I, I, really? I, I, I emulated uh, Bill Rogers. I thought he was a, a real hero mm -hmm. to, to win the marathon as many times as he did. And for me, what I, I began to do was run from one spot to four telephone poles. It, it, it was literally, that's uh, the distances I could run. I was measuring it by telephone poles. Mm -hmm. And over the years, you know, telephone poles became miles and so forth. But uh, you can run a marathon and complete it if you put in the, uh, the training time. Uh, you probably need to have uh, about 35 to 40 miles a week. So that's what people would call a base. Your base. So your base should be 35 to 40 miles a week. At, That's right. at the pace that you might run a marathon at. Oh, so if you were a runner that might run no, it slower than that. Slower than that. Oh yeah. So your practice slower than you're running a marathon. Yeah. You you always want to do your um, your uh, long runs. Your long runs are usually once a week, and we do those at. How long is a long run? A long run should be uh, probably beginning somewhere in the area of about 10 miles and going up to 20, 22. So you would run a 20 mile run for for fun. One week, I mean, just as practice. A lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> so you run 20 miles every few weeks? Um, you might run a... You might do a 20 mile, well, you might run a 20 mile one week and then the following week do maybe 15 and then bring it back up to 20 again. Oh, really? And you do it over a period of maybe f uh, 12 to f 15 weeks before the marathon. You need about three months to really uh, prepare. In this particular marathon, though, you hadn't done any of the real long runs. I hadn't run over 15 miles, but I had done uh, a steady base of at least 40 miles a week. So you had a strong, you think that base is what carried you through? That's the only thing that carried me through. <laughs> now, when you did your 15 mile runs, did you run that at the pace that you would run a marathon at? No, no. You always run that um, about 30, 30 seconds per mile slower than your, what's called the PMP, your preferred marathon pace, according to my coach. Is that right? Now, did you, so you're in the actual marathon, you did run the pace that you had decided you were going to run it. I mean, you felt that, and you, you set, you wear a watch. Oh yeah, you wear a watch, and you set your, you set your watch once you pass each mile. Mm -hmm. They have timers there, but you may have started differently, so you really can't tell. You, you know, you have the gun time. Right. So you may have a different time. Uh, so you have to go by your own watch. So you pretty much follow that as you're going along and you know where you are. Were you running with anybody? I mean, did you get into the race and find someone that has your kind of pace and become buddies and run along together? Sometimes that happens, but this year I, I just was concentrating on running at uh, a steady pace and uh, enjoying it and slapping kids along the side and the slapping five, that type of thing. I just had a, a, a fabulous time. Did it was, it was a lot of fun? Time. A lot of fun. That's great. Well, I think it's great that we uh, had a chance to have you here uh, today and to and to talk about the uh, the marathon now the if anyone's interested in getting uh, getting involved with running uh, we have the, the the race in town the plaster old home days that you mentioned yes. uh, do you know that's is that June 29th is it June 29th is old home day and uh, what time does the race typically kick off it starts at nine o'clock it's uh, officially marked um, certified 3.1 miles uh, we've had that clocked 
Uh, it's professionally timed. We have a timer with the, the digital clock, just like you'd see on the marathon. Now, does anybody just like walk along for exercise? Because we all can't be. Uh, oh yeah, we've had such prodigious marathon runners like no. you. Yeah, you, you have walkers, people that actually go along and. Yes, we've had some, some people. Families. I, uh, well, that's what this race is. It's a family event. Uh, we actually have family teams. Uh, we'll take uh, three members or the three fastest members of a family. There could be five people in the family. That'd be fine but the th top three would score. And is it just for Plastow, or is that for anybody? No, no that's anybody. Else. Who was the fastest family in Plastow last year? Do you remember? Uh, actually, it was the Sickles. Is that right? Where, where, so. is, where are they in Plastow? Paul, Paul Sickle, who owns uh, Westville Supply. Oh, sure. Yeah. Now, Craig Fram uh, is the... Um, is the record holder of the race and of course well, his son I've seen his son running he has a younger son that's starting yeah, to he run. finds one other person we're, we're toast <laughs> I well I saw his son running his young his little son running and uh, I saw him in a race because I was in a race and and his son passed me yeah so and it was pretty early in the race when he passed me so I think he's going to be I'm sure be a runner he too. has uh, quite a father to follow so well uh, Dennis Doucette's a relative of uh, Craig Frams yes. could, could they get in as a uh, team uh, technically, they could. Well, we hope if they put that we together, stretch the family. <laughs> what about the Vitalis? Any other runners with the Vitality boys? Uh, my two sons may uh, run. Uh, Jamie's been uh, running up at school. He's at Plymouth State. Mm -hmm. and my other son's at uh, Central Catholic, and he's now playing baseball. And he runs a little bit. So there could be a Vitality team taking. It could the, be. Uh, could class be. to all home days. Yeah, we'll see. Well, it's great. Well, I'm glad that you uh, had a chance to uh, to come in and uh, and talk with us and share share your experiences. And I think it was a good way to um, to kick off the show. So we just want to thank you for coming. Wish you continued uh, success you. in in your running, and look forward to the Boston Marathon again next year. And maybe you can come back and fill us in. And we'll see you on June 29th at Old Home Days. Thank you very much. And thanks Bill. and congratulations for all your marathoning. Thank you. We just want to thank everybody for listening in. This is our, uh, our kickoff show for the um, Plasto Area athletes. If there's anybody in the audience that knows of an athlete that wants to tell a story, um, we're looking to get athletes just from Plasto and uh, give us a call down at the Plasto Area Cable TV, Channel 17, here in Plasto. Give us a call and we'd be happy to get you um, on the show and talk about any of the athletic events that you're involved with. So for now, uh, good night and thanks for listening. Bill Verge. Thanks.